Hi everyone, welcome back and how's it going? So I'm Patricia and if this is your first time tuning in, special welcome to you. And if this is not your first time, welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about self-care, just as you would have seen in the title. So self-care can mean different things to different people. Sometimes self-care can come across as being a trending thing. So what I want to share with you today are 25 ways of what self-care looks like. And perhaps you may be doing some of this already and you're not even thinking that you're doing self-care. So maybe as I share them, you'll have like an aha moment where you'll be like, ah, oh, I'm doing self-care already and I'm not even thinking that this is self-care. Because sometimes we can feel like self-care is just going to the spa, having a bubble bath, doing our nails. And yes, all of this is self-care, but self-care is so much more than that. So I hope that in today's video, as I share with you what these 25 ways of what self-care looks like, you could perhaps incorporate some of this into your lifestyle, make self-care your thing and make it a part of who you are. And if you're doing some of this already, then congratulations too. So let's jump right into what those 25 ways of what self-care looks like. So the first example of what self-care looks like is moving your body. And this could be any kind of movement, whether it's you going for a walk, whether it's you doing some stretches, whether it's you doing some Pilates, even bouncing on an exercise ball, but whatever the movement is, but once it makes you feel good. And this is the first example of what self-care could look like. Because exercise has so much benefits to the body and the mere fact that we're moving and we're getting our heart rate up, this is a great thing and it's going to be to have so much impact and benefits to your body overall. The second way of what self-care looks like is tuning into yourself. It's tuning into yourself and asking yourself, what do I need? What do I need right now? It's self-talk. And persons might say talking to yourself is like being crazy. No, talking to yourself is not crazy. So you tuning into yourself and asking yourself, what do I need right now? That is self-care, right? It's self-talk. It's being a detective of your feelings, asking yourself, how do I feel? What do I feel? And the mere fact that you're doing that, that is going to make you in tune with yourself. It's going to make you understand what are your triggers. When, when you feel a certain way, when you feel overwhelmed, you are going to get in tune with your emotions. And this is an aspect of self-care. The third way in which you can show self-care or practice self-care is treating yourself with kindness. And this is not something that we would think that is self-care, but it is. Because most times it would not be our innate intention to treat someone badly or to speak to someone badly. But we do it to ourselves. We will tell ourselves we're not good enough, you're so stupid, you can't do anything right. And we would really bash into ourselves. So the fact that we can treat ourselves good with the things that we say to ourselves, that is an aspect of self-care. So saying things to yourself like, I am good enough, I have my back, I could do more than I am capable of. Speaking good things to yourself is a part of self-care. So that's what I would say is the third way in which you can practice self-care, treating yourself kindly. And the fourth way in which you can practice self-care is preparing yourself a healthy meal. Yeah, that's simple. Just preparing yourself a healthy meal and the fact that you're trying your best to eat healthy or put nourishing healthy food into your body, that is you practicing self-care. Very simple, right? So that's number four. And number five is eating something that you like. Yeah, you're not going to try to be eating all kind of junk, but the fact that if you have something or there's some particular food that you like, eat it and don't feel guilty about it. And that is self-care. And it's not your intention to try to eat unhealthy or to try to put unhealthy things into your body, but the fact that you can eat something that you like and not feel guilty about it, that is self-care. If there is something that you like and you want to have it, of course, enjoy it, eat it. But you know, you're always mindful of the fact that you're not going to overdo it. You're not going to overconsume because you're about taking care of your body. So that is self-care as well. So let's go right into the other one, which is number six, giving yourself a good night's sleep. Yes, that's number six, everyone, giving yourself a good night's sleep. And this could be you planning your sleeping, whether, you know, you want to go to bed at a particular time, planning your sleep schedule, giving your body that ample rest. That is you practicing self-care. And the seventh way in which you can practice self-care is getting in tune with your spirituality or your spiritual side. 
it will be things like taking that time to spend time in prayer, spend time in worship, getting closer to God, and just taking that moment to just lift yourself spiritually. And that can also be an aspect of what is self-care. So your spirituality it could definitely be seen as an aspect of self-care. And number eight could be you doing something outdoors. Get out in nature, do something, do some planting, go for a walk, go in the park, go hiking, go on a picnic, but just do something outdoors that you could just engage nature, the fresh air, and you can just feel a part of that oneness with nature. So that's also an aspect of what you can do as a way to contribute to your self-care. Another way um, of what self-care looks like is you taking some deep breaths, just slowing down any time of the day and you taking some deep breaths and just calming and just calming your nervous system and that is self-care it's just about taking that time to just sometimes find your center and just breathe and just bring down and just doing that simple stopping and just taking that time to just breathe calming your nervous system that is Okay. So now we move on to number 10. And number 10, this could look like you listening to some music, maybe a podcast, but just listening to something that is uplifting your soul. That can be self-care as well because you are pouring something into you that's lifting you. You know, that brings some form of personal development to you and makes you feel good. That is also self-care. And the 11th way in how you can practice self-care is sitting and looking at a movie that you like. Yeah, that's simple. The fact that you could sit and look at a movie that you like, that is you practicing self-care. It's you doing something that makes you feel good. So looking at a movie is practicing self-care. Just taking some time out and just you sitting down and looking at an enjoyable movie that brings you some form of joy or some form of peace that is self-care so if you're still looking at this video so far i want to say thank you and i want you to leave the word self-care in the comments below so i will know that you have reached this far in the video and let's continue now to number 12 which is taking some time or just taking a break to just spend some time with yourself just taking some time taking a break by yourself and doing nothing yeah nothing doing absolutely nothing just taking some time by yourself you alone and just relaxing doing nothing and that's another example of what self-care could look like so another way of what self-care could look like is you reflecting on what's important to you and your values and seeing how you can align your actions more towards those values or what's important to you so just reflecting and looking at what's important to you and making those little steps um, to align yourself more with what's important to you and your values. And this is another aspect of what self-care could look like. And number 14, another example of what self-care could look like is you saying no to things that you don't want to do or you don't like doing more often or that is not in alignment with you. And saying no is a complete sentence. If you don't like doing something or you don't want to do something, say no to that. Say no more often. And the fact that you say no and it's not in alignment with you, that is going to bring you more peace. So saying no more often to things you don't like or want to do, that is definitely an aspect or an example of what self-care can look like. And number 15, doing something that makes you feel Pampered. And this could be, for example, like doing your nails, doing your hair, going for a massage, doing a pedicure, buying something for yourself that you like, doing a facial, going on a vacation or taking a trip, boxing your legs, doing your eyebrows, taking a haircut. If you're a guy, taking a bubble bath. All these are examples of what self-care looks like and pampering yourself. So definitely this is an area that you can 
engage in and these are just examples there are so many more examples of things that you can do to pamper yourself these are just me touching on a few so whatever they are whatever the things are that makes you feel pampered those are examples of self-care as well because you're doing things that you want to do and that makes you feel good so that's self-care another aspect of what self-care can look like which is number 16 will be you disconnecting from social media every once in a while and this could be just you taking off your phone for the day, staying off social media for a day or a week and connecting when you feel to. Because sometimes social media can be very overwhelming. It can sometimes be very toxic. And just taking that time to just take a, to take a step back sometimes is all that we need. To just, you know, recuperate ourselves and go again or reconnect. Because our mind is sometimes bombarded with all this information. A lot of it sometimes negative information. And just giving ourselves a break from social media is an aspect of self-care that is going to do so much justice to you, your mind, your spirit and everything. You know, so that's another aspect of self-care that I would say is one that we should all incorporate ever so often into our self-care regimen. Just taking that time and that break from social media ever so often. All right, so that's another aspect, which is number 16, of what self-care can look like. And now we move on to number 17, and this is spending time with people or a person that you like being around or you like talking to. And this could be family, friends co-worker, colleague, those people that add value to you, that makes you feel good, that uplifts you. Just spending time with them is another aspect of what self-care can look like. Just spending time with those people. All right, so that's number 17. Up next, we have number 18, which is keeping your body hydrated and giving your body enough water or and other nourishing drinks that could keep your body hydrated is another aspect of what self-care can look like. Might seem very simple, but yes, that could be another aspect of what self-care can look like by just keeping your body hydrated, drinking more water, drinking more nourishing drinks that can keep your body replenished and hydrated is another aspect of what self-care can look like. Very simple, but very effective. And number 19, another example of self-care could be you taking five minutes out of the day to write out your thoughts or to do a brain dump you know to just get all those thoughts out of your mind that is probably bugging you and this could be whether it's a journal or whether it's a book or whether it's a scrap paper but it's just about you writing out your thoughts doing a brain dump just to clear your mind and keep yourself from feeling overwhelmed and this can be a great way to help you to keep your stress level down and you know to help you to just keep that balance and, and to just keep your mind just clear whenever you're feeling like you know any stress may be on you or you're feeling overwhelmed this could be a great tool of just taking five minutes out of the day and just writing your thoughts out just doing a brain dump and this could be a definitely be a good way of what self-care can look like as well so that's number 19 Next, we have number 20, which is doing things that energizes you or makes you feel good. And these could be things like reading a book, cooking, carrying your dog for a walk, going camping, going fishing, listening music, savoring a cup of tea or coffee. Mm, that could also be what self-care can look like just doing these things and there could be the list could be exhausted in terms of these things that energizes you or makes you feel good but these are just some examples of what self-care can look like and it can be any other thing besides what i am sharing here so long as it energizes you and it makes you feel good then yeah then definitely do more of it and that is self-care so as I said, your list could be different from what I am saying here, but the most important thing is the word energizes you, makes you feel good. And just as I said, if that makes you feel good, then do more of it. And when you do it, know that you are actually engaging in self-care. So that's number 20. And number 21 is being in tune with what's going on in your body and how you feel. You know, being aware and alert to if there's any changes in your body, being aware and alert to if you're feeling any kind of sensation or any growth or any kind of 
um, anything strange that's going on in your body or you might notice perhaps you might notice that you know you have a bump in an area that you didn't have that before or you notice something strange or you notice some kind of thing happening or you notice a, a rash here and you know you didn't have that, that that there before being alert to the things that are happening to you and not only just being alert but taking the, the necessary action you know being proactive about it and going and checking it out and not just ignoring it and saying okay well I didn't notice this year before and it's probably going to go away on its own. No, you're being proactive. You're taking preventative care and proactive action to check it out, to make an appointment, to go by the doctor, to, to do, um, to go and have an assessment done and to be in tune to doing the things that you need to do to resolve this or to find out what this is. So when you take the preventative actions and the proactive actions, that is you engaging in self-care. This is you caring about your health. This is you caring about the body that God gave you. The one body that you have to live this life out and to accomplish all your goals, dreams and aspirations. So doing that, that is actually self-care. So don't ignore it. Make that a very obvious part of your self-care. And number 22, self-care could also look like listening to your body if you're tired and you feel like you need to go take a nap if you're feeling tired and you feel like you need to go take a nap go take a nap <laughs> go take a nap if you're tired listen to your body go take a nap because whatever you're doing and if that means dropping what you're doing and going and sleeping or taking a nap do that because what you're doing is going to be there when you get back up and when you take your nap, the fact that you have had that nice little bit of sleep, you'll feel refreshed, you'll feel replenished, and you will be able to complete your task effectively and efficiently. So listen to your body, go take your nap, don't feel any way about it because you're, whatever you're doing, whatever task is going to be there because your body is telling you something, I need to rest. So if your body is telling you it needs a nap, it needs some rest, listen to your body and go take that nap and when you do that and you listen to your body you are engaging in self-care so listen to your body and go take that nap and number 23 self-care or another aspect of what self-care can look like is taking stock and check of your mental health so if you're feeling overwhelmed you're feeling stressed you feel like you know you're out of it you have issues with depression anxiety anxiousness nervousness i want that you not feel ashamed about this but instead seek help seek someone who you can talk to so that you can get your feelings out and you can deal with these issues that you're feeling if you need to find someone to talk to find a friend that you trust that could help you in this area or there are professionals that you can reach out to like psychologists or counselors that you can talk to to help you to deal with this state that you're in and there's nothing to be ashamed about with your mental health and I understand that there is this stigma around mental health and it has this is nothing new it's been around a long time but I can see that we, if we do our part as more awareness of mental health is coming on stream, that is gradually changing. And I want you to know that there is nothing to be ashamed about. Because what I always say, and you know, I, I have a little kind of thing with that when people have this whole stigma around mental health, is because if your mind is not right, you are no good to yourself. Because where the mind goes, the body goes. And there is nothing to be ashamed of when it comes to your mental health. And I want you to remember that. Because if we don't have our minds, we are no good to ourselves. Because we can have all the dreams, all the goals, all the aspirations in the world. And if we do not have our mind, we are no good to ourselves. We are not going to get any of that accomplished. And that's a fact. So value your mental health and make it a priority as part of your self-care. Okay, so mental health is one of those things that we should definitely see as self-care and take whatever measures that we have to take 
to keep ourselves in a good state mentally. So our mental health is definitely an aspect of self-care and we should take that seriously and we should see that as important and as a priority. And next we have number 24 which is learning to forgive sooner, quicker, faster. And this is another way in which you can show yourself self-care by not holding grudges um, or harboring negative energy in your mind and body towards anyone because in the end this is going to this is going to make you toxic and it's going to only hurt you more than the person who you're holding in mind or you have a grudge against so forgiving sooner quicker faster is another aspect of what self-care can look like it's not the most easiest thing to do sometimes for some people because sometimes someone might hurt you and you know, it might be so bad that you hold a grudge and that anger is so much inside of you that you develop hate and resentment and the bitterness build up inside of you. But by learning to forgive sooner, quicker, faster, this is all about helping you, caring for you and healing you and treating you better at the end of the day. And that is self-care. So that's number 24. And next we have number 25, which is learning to have open honest conversations as well as the tough conversations and i know that this could be challenging for some persons or maybe you're not accustomed doing that but learning to have healthy open conversations especially the tough conversations um that is going to be an aspect of what self-care can look like and this could be conversations where you're sharing about what is affecting you what is hurting you what is bothering you that are making you feel not good and these conversations can be with persons like your spouse, your children, your friends, your relatives, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, as well as even your employer. So learning to have tough conversations and sharing your feelings about things that are affecting you and not making you feel good or disturbing you or hurting you, that you might not think that is self-care, but it is self-care because learning to have healthy conversations especially the tough conversations will overall help you because it will definitely help you with developing your confidence making you feel more worthy about yourself making you respect yourself more making you respect others more it will help you to stay in a better mental state so looking at this from the perspective of it being something one example of self-care is definitely one to take note of. So yes, these are the 25 ways of what self-care can look like. And if you've reached all the way to the end of this video, thank you for watching straight through till the end. I hope that what I would have shared here, if you would have been doing some of this already, maybe some of it is new to you, and perhaps you might consider incorporating some of these into your self-care regimen. So everyone, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for tuning in. And until our next video, see you soon. Bye-bye.